doesn't get much prettier than this. This is Mount Bromo in East Java. Indonesia is an enormous place. Very, very terrain, but boy, isn't that a place you want to visit? Here in Jakarta, we're moving on to the lightweight division. Georgi Stoyanov takes on Syed Hussein Arslan Aliyev. Six years old, born in Burgas, Bulgaria, but now lives in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. His grandfather was the first ever Bulgarian to win an Olympic gold, and he did that in wrestling. That was back in 1956 in Melbourne. Let's take a look at this guy's stats. He's got 11 submission wins and an eight year mixed martial arts veteran. He's the former Max Fight featherweight champion, so he's got a lot of experience. He trains with some very high level fighters out there at the Saigon Sports Club. He's with the lightweight, Ev Ting. He's with the bantamweight, Sotir Kutsukov. So he's got a lot of experience that surrounded him, helping him get ready for battle tonight. At one time, he had an 18-3 and three record. How about that? He's had a bit of a rough time of it recently, but tremendous experience up against a man who really doesn't have that much experience, but almost unlimited potential in Saeed Arslan Aliyev. We'll see him in just a moment. Good to see Georgi Stoyanov from Bulgaria, living in Ho Chi Minh City, enter the one championship cage for the first time. From Dagestan in Russia and now fighting out of Istanbul, Turkey, Said Arslan Aliyev. We'll call him Dougie from here on in. That's his nickname. That's apparently what everybody calls him. He's a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, is a European silver medalist in that art. He's a Wushu national champion. He's fought four times in the one cage. Every one of them finished in the first round. An average of 56 seconds to finish off his opponent so far. Yeah, let's take a look at some of these fast finishes. Here he is throwing his opponents around. How long was that one? That was 32 seconds. Here he is snatching on that guillotine, and it was only a matter of time before his opponent was forced to tap. How long was that? 26 <laughs> seconds, Steve. Here he is showcasing some stand-up. This one went a little bit longer, but not by very much. That was just under two minutes at a minute and 57 seconds. By far the longest fight of his professional career, but it was in that fight that he really exhibited his skills. We saw some tremendous submission moves in those first two fights that you showed us, Fitch, but he really demonstrated some quick and powerful hands and feet in that almost two minute contest that we saw just then. Yes, yeah, Steve, I was talking to his coach and his coach wants him to get pushed. He says that we don't even get to see the true doggy until he gets tired or hurt. 
So all this stuff we're seeing so far isn't even the real fighter in him. So you better not hurt him and you better not make him too tired. He's no baby, but he's still very young, 22 years old. When they stand side by side, this is how they look. The big age difference there, 14 years, sawing off the senior man. Dougie, eight centimeters tall. Slight height advantage, but also we've got a striking advantage and grappling and cage control advantage all go to Arslan Aliyev. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is three rounds of five minutes in the one championship lightweight division. And it's brought to you by MNC. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a max fight featherweight champion, standing at 170 centimeters tall, holding a professional MMA record of 19 wins and 11 losses. Representing Saigon Sports Club and fighting out of Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam, from Bulgaria, presenting Georgi Stachev Stoyanov. And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He is the Azerbaijan Nogi Grappling Champion, standing at 178 centimeters tall, holding a professional MMA record of four wins and no losses. Representing Korvos MMA and fighting out of Istanbul, Turkey. Give it up for Sagid Dagi Hussein Australia. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mr. Olivier Ghost. Well, guys, watch out for headbutt, low blow, back of the head and spine. This is my corner all the time. Defend yourself at all time. Touch grab if you want. Back your corner. Arslan Aliyev against Stoyanov is brought to you by MNC. Really intriguing contest, this one. Very right, judge, experienced judge, Stoyanov. Judge so Ready? much Ready? potential. Fight! Wouldn't surprise me if Dougie is challenging for the lightweight championship, perhaps sometime early 2018. <laughs> Got work to do in front of him tonight, though. Both fighters trading leg kicks early on. Stoyanov is the one that connects there. Barely misses that one. Doggy's kind of taking control of the center of the cage, pushing forward. Gets that leg up nice and high, but he's quick with it as well, Mitch, which is a difficult skill, and he goes downstairs as well. Stoyanov immediately goes in for the takedown, misses it there, and Doggy drops some bombs Here there. comes the attack, and it's around the 30-second mark, and he likes to finish fights. And Stoyanov is in a bit of trouble. He's covering up quite well. It's good defense with the legs. But it's an oncoming truck, isn't it, Sto uh, Arsenal Aliyev, once he gets going? Stoyanov no, remained remarkably composed there, even though he took some big shots. That's the veteran in him right there. You can see him trying to grab that single leg, keeps his head nice and close, so Dagi can't really wind back and create a lot of space and drop big bombs. But those body shots, look there, they're hurting him. Covering up for all he is worth, the Bulgarian, and who can blame him? Got hold of that left leg and he's not letting go. The hammer blows come in, four of them land flush in and around the ear. He's trying to go there for that ankle pick. He's trying to pull Doggy Net back down into guard, but whoa, 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 oh, that's, now that's a wrong. an illegal blow. You cannot kick a downed opponent, and Stoyanov is not making any attempt to get up. Yeah, that technical ground kick landed flush there. Rich, what's happening right now? Well, listen, Olivier didn't didn't deem that as a as a purposeful thing. Like even though he purposely threw the kick, but I think that was a lapse in, in memory for Doggy and that he, he was thinking maybe he could knee the guy, but instead he he actually threw the kick. Because he looked apologetic. It wasn't something that he was doing like intentionally. Uh, he has five minutes to recover here. I'm sure he's going to take as much of that time as he can. And, what if he can't uh, recover? You know, obviously Olivier now is warning Doggy for for the foul. It, this is something that could actually result in a yellow card immediately, but he hasn't 
chosen to uh, actually deduct that or, or hit Doggy with the yellow card. The big concern is, though, is if Stoyanov cannot continue. Is there any clarity on what happens then, Rich? Yeah, the, the, in order for the fight, the, the fight will, if it reaches the midway point of the fight, uh, me, and yeah, so this is a three, five minute round fight. So right. if we were beyond the seven and a half minute mark, this fight would actually go to the judge's scorecard, but we haven't made it there yet. So this will be considered a no contest. No contest. There's no, there's no element of disqualification, you don't think, here, then? He, Olivier never yellow carded Doggy, right. so there won't be a, a disqualification. On okay. This. Well, let's see it again and make our own decisions about whether you think there was intent there. I'm sure he knows the rules, and I'm sure he regrets it. You can see the, the, the scramble here. Stoyanov's doing the right thing, but as he's broken away, there's Doggy throwing a technical ground kick it does connect flush with the side of Stoyanov's head I thought he got a lot of arm there rich yeah it looked like he got a lot of arm there I, I, I think he grazed the top of his head I, 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 I it definitely looked like the foot made contact there but I could be wrong could be the angle but definitely not a good position for doggy to be in well you think some the way the fight was going Dougie was clearly on top, clearly in an advantageous position. He will be very frustrated that he did what he did. And Stoyanov really doesn't look as if he's wanting to continue at all. We've got Dr. Warren there ushering in the stretcher, and this is not a good sign. It did seem to me, and I... I, w I wonder if we can uh, perhaps get another look at it because it, it seemed to me as if there was a lot of arm involved in that kick. Mitch, Mitch saying, Mitch saying that it grazed the top of the head. I'm not saying it grazed the top of the head. I'm saying right here you can fully see that it kicks the side of Stoyanov's head. And I see that. Yeah, yeah. Disqualification for illegal technique. So he's been disqualified. A red card has been shown, perhaps somewhat belatedly by Olivier Cost, but that's the official decision. And that means, Rich, that the interpretation is that he knew what he was doing. It may have been in the spur of the moment, but nothing accidental about it. Yeah, I would have expected that if they were giving the red card, that the red card would have come out immediately, which is why I said earlier that there wouldn't be a, a DQ. Sure. The red card does come out, and they actually do disqualify him, so that's a, a loss on, on Doggy's record. Yep, a red card and a red mark on his previously unbeaten record. This man has tremendous potential. You saw it in the moments leading up to this, how much he can dominate fights, but he's now got to get over this one.